Hey everybody, welcome to Local Light. I'm John Compton, and today we're discussing the Dells Dam. And with me in studio is Kelly Thomas. He is a park ranger for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers at the Dells Dam. And so, Kelly, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks for taking time out to sit down and talk with me. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and I understand we've got you for an hour. You do, you have me for a whole hour. Yeah, well, there's obviously lots to talk about with the dam, so an hour, we're gonna fill that up with no problem. But let's talk a little bit about, first, just real quick background on yourself. You're a park ranger, how long you've been there? What's that mean? Uh, yeah, I'm a park ranger for the Corps of Engineers. I've been with the Dallas Dam for about seven years now. I moved out here from uh, central Illinois, where I also was a park ranger with the Corps of Engineers. Uh, my main job out there is I oversee the Natural Respo Resource Program, uh, which is the park rangers, my maintenance guys that do the parks and rec stuff, uh, as well as support the dam with any kind of functions that they need for us out there. Oh, okay. Well, then, were you with the dam back there in Illinois then? Yeah. You were? Oh, yep. okay. So you were already familiar with that. Is that generally how it works with park rangers? You're kind of a specialized area or yeah uh the park rangers are uh, a key player in the corps of engineers uh outside the northwest back in the midwest and the south uh, there's a lot of park rangers and they pretty much run the dams there uh, out here is a little different where we have hydropower and things like that but okay but uh, back there they they do everything from the maintenance to the dam operations to uh, the regulations for campers and people that come visit the lakes. Okay. Now, is the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers generally the ones that handle the different dams throughout the country, or is that depend? It, it, it's a mixture. Um, a, a lot of different agencies have dams and run dams. Uh, the Corps is a big player in dam operations. Um, there's places back in the Midwest, like the Tennessee Valley, um, that has dams that also do, produces power. Uh, okay. BLM has some dams. Uh, so a, a whole bunch of people do operate the dams. Core is kind of the dam. A lot of people associate dams with the Corps of Engineers. Okay. Now, is the Corps actually an extension of the military, or? Uh, it is part. It is a military uh, agency. Uh, as far as uh, it is ran by the military, it is a, it is a part of the Army. Okay. Um, all of our higher ups and our bigger bosses are mil active military members. Uh -huh. uh, our our lead person here in the Portland District is actually a colonel. Uh, in the Northwest Division, it's a general, and then the guy that oversees uh, the headquarters or the whole Corps of Engineers is actually a, a general as well. Okay. Um, but most of the people that work for the Corps of Engineers are civilians. Um, you know, they may have worked in the military previously or are reservists or things like that. But for the majority of the people, especially here at the Dells Dam, uh, we're all civilians. Okay. So let's talk about the Dells Dam. What, uh, when did it come into existence and why? And let's, let's discuss that a bit. Uh, the Corps of, Engineer, or Corps of Engineers started building the dam in about 1952. Um, it was finished in, in 1957 where the first 14 uh, generators came on online and we started working it. Uh, so it was about a five year process just to get it running. Um, with any dam, you have to, you have to build some, put some, the water somewhere else for a little bit. So they build temporary uh, dams to divert water around. Then they can start the process of laying all the concrete, um, doing the structures, putting the spillway gates in, starting the NAVLAC, uh, putting the holes for the generators, uh, all, that, all that different stuff that goes along with building the dam. Uh, it was the first 14 generators come in in 1957. Uh, it's all running. Uh, in 1973, they finished the rest of the generators for a total of 22. Uh, plus there's some additional, what they call fish turbines, which uh, help um, bubble the water or move the water a little better and produce power at the same time. They're not as big as the other generators, uh, but they also are installed there too. Okay. So about 1973 is when it was all said and done and what you see out there now. Okay, okay. So in 73, when it opened, was it open to the public then? It was. Uh, it, it used to be open to the public all the time. People could come out there and enjoy the parks. Uh, Patterson Park right there by the administrative building. A lot of people know it as the duck pond or the sturgeon pond. Uh, then over at Westrick, which is over on the far end of the end of the powerhouse closest to the bridge, uh, people used to go down there and picnic, uh, read books, lay out in the sun. It used to be a very popular place. Uh, people could always go to the Navlock, see boats going in and out of the Navlock, going up and down in there. Uh, so it was a real attraction to the people of the Dows and people coming to the Dows. Okay. So Richard Nixon actually did the dedication, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Was that in 73? Uh, it was. It, uh -huh. was it, it was a big event. Uh, the core... The core moving into this area and producing power and bringing jobs to the area uh, it was a big event. So at most dams at that time, 
uh, the president or a vice president would come out and uh, do the commencement commencement speech okay. uh, for the dam. Okay. Well, we talked, or you were talking a little bit about when the dam was being constructed, water had to be diverted and all of that. And uh, anybody that's familiar with the Columbia Gorge is probably familiar with Celilo Falls, which when that uh, was, when the dam was actually built, filled all that in. Um, what, what, what are some of the uh, things that you have to say about that as far as how did that impact the, the dam and, and jobs? And yeah, the, uh you're absolutely right. When the dam was at, when we ended the water behind the dam and made like what they called like Celilo, um, unfortunately Celilo Falls was covered. Mm -hmm. um, the Corps of Engineers uh, did do a hydro survey underneath the water uh, not too long ago to see how the falls have been affected since they've been underwater. And what they found is that they're in really good shape. The falls really? are still there. Um, uh, it, it's a it's a great thing to look at. It's a great interpretive piece to show people because uh, you're absolutely right. Salado Falls was a big part of the, uh, not only this community uh, but tribal members as well, uh, right. and people you know the, the people that have been around this area for a long time do associate the Dalles with Salado Falls. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's actually like you said, it's still there. So if you were to drain it, it would. Salilo Falls would return. Yeah, if, if the river was to go back to the way it was, Salilo Falls would still be there. Yeah, interesting. Well, I want to talk to you a bit more about uh, the parks and the camping and stuff that's, that's on site there when we return. We're going to take a quick break. Kelly Thomas uh, with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers at the Dells Dam is my guest today, and we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.